So in this supplemental lecture, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over a few of the concepts I found that students have had some of the most trouble with, and they're all sort of inter interrelated. So the first concept is, is how can I just get a data grid working in WPF? The other is, is how can I bind data to a data grid to display? And then what do I need to bind to this data grid? So we're actually going to create a list of employees that we're going to bind to this data grid. The other concept that students tend to have a problem with is how I can take something like, let's say, a list of employees and how I can pass that to other windows and then maybe have one window pass it to another window which passes it to another window. Just the concept of how do I pass data around between windows. So let's pretend we're going to create an application for a company that has to manage employees. And so what we're going to have to do is this initial page on our application here, we're going to need to display um, all of the employees and their information. So we're going to have an employee ID and let's say first name and last name. And again, this could be a million attributes. So let's just keep it simple though. Employee ID, first name and last name. So let's pretend we have a database and in this database we have an employee table. Now this is a very um, normal scenario that I, I have to handle all the time at work where I have a database table like an employee table could be a passenger table could be you know a, you know any table that represents something and so let's take our employee table in the database and you know it could have 50 columns in it but our particular database table is going to have employee ID first name and last name so our goal is to display this data in this database table pull it in and display it on a data grid. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to drag and drop a data grid onto our window here. And so this particular data grid, we're just going to move it up to here a little bit and we're going to name it, we'll call this, you know, data grid employees. So that's the name of our data grid that we're going to display all the data in. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag a button on here. Now the purpose of this button is just navigation. And so what we're going to want is in our application, maybe there's multiple places where we need to display this list of employees. So this exact same list, well, we don't want to have to go to the database and grab it multiple times. We just want to grab it once and then pass it around to all these different windows. So what we can do is I can right click here, do add a new window. Do WPF window, call it window one, that's fine. So on this window, let's pretend that this window actually doesn't need to use that. What it does is we're going to click this button and it's going to then pass that data to another window. So this is sort of an intermediate window. It does some sort of functionality, but it just then navigates the user to another window, which we want to display that same list. So let's say add a new window. And then we'll do window two, that's fine. So on this window is we're going to have our data grid and that's going to display our information. We'll call this one name, you know, data grid, my employees. Call it something just a little bit different than on our initial window. So let's go ahead and navigate back to our first window. So now the first problem we have to solve is, is how do I get the data displayed on this window? So anytime you have a database table, the idea being is that, okay, I'm going to query the database, I'm going to pull all this data back, then what I'm going to do is, is for each row that is returned to me, I'm going to create some new object that represents a row in the database, and then I'm going to add that object to a generic list of those objects. Then once I've done that, I've added all these objects to my generic list, then I'm going to bind that generic list to my data grid to display all the data. So the first thing we want to do now is we want to add a class and this class is going to represent our database table. So in this case it's an employee. It's just a single employee. We want to create a class called employee. And so I'm going to create this public class. Change this to public. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to create some auto implemented properties just for this employee's data. So we'll just make them all strings just to make it simple. So the first one we're going to do is SID and then I'm going to say get and set and then I'm just going to copy this let's do s first name and s last name 
So I've now created a class and its only purpose is just to hold basically a single row of data representing an employee. So now what I want to do is I want to create sort of some sort of like employee manager class that's going to extract all the data from the database and actually fill up a list. So let's create a new class, CLS employee manager class. And so again, this one will have all the business logic that deals with employees and managing. So for instance, it's going to have you know, where it actually goes to the database, executes an SQL statement, pulls back all the relevant employees. It's going to have an SQL statement or a method that has an SQL statement that deletes a particular employee from the database. Maybe an SQL statement and a method that updates a very particular, you know, employee. So that's where all of that sort of, anything you're dealing with managing employees, you know, and, and that data in the database, that's what's going to go inside this class. But the first thing we want to, before we insert and delete and do all that kind of stuff, we just want to pull that data back from the database, fill it up in a list so we can display it all. So what we want to do is, remember, we want to return a list of our employees. So I'm going to say it's a generic list of type CLS employee. That's with a return type, and let's just say, you know, get employees. And so now we've created our class now. And so what we're going to want to do now is we're going to create a new class of employees, and this is our list of employees. And so now we've created our new list. And so the first thing, or the next thing we would do now is we'd actually make some database call. So we're going to skip that step, but you just use our data access class, you query the database, you pull the data back, you get it into a data set, and then you loop it around. So now we're going to pretend that we have all of that data, and we've pulled it back. So in our particular example, all we're going to do is we're going to say list of employees dot add. Again, this represents that we're looping around um, you know, some sort of data set or something we've gotten back from our thing. So we can say we're creating a new employee. And then what I can do is I can do this sort of shorthand notation. So we're going to say this ID is one, two, three, comma, first name equals ABC, and then last name equals DEF. And so you can see now what we've done is we've just added a single employee, whoops, equal sign there to our class. And so let's go add a, a few employees now. So we have a little bit of data to look like. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Doesn't really matter the data here. Just something to kind of differentiate them. Now again, this represented this little step here. We actually went out to the database, we queried it all, we got it back, we looped through each piece of data, we added it to our list, and now the last thing we have to do is return our list. So now we can go back to our main window here, and so when this window loads, so let's go ahead into our main window code here, and so as this application loads, what we're going to want to do is let's go to our data grid, and we're, we have this method called item source. And so that's what we're going to want to bind to for our manager, for our, our list of employees. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to need to create our CS employee manager. And manager. Now we always want to actually instantiate these in our constructor. So let's do that. So now that we've been instantiate our employee manager, we can actually make the call now to actually get all of the employees. And so you can see, if I highlight this, it returns a list of employees, and that's going to get bound to our data grid's item source. So when I run this application, you can see that now that data is bound. Now if you wanted to, what you would probably want to do for your project is you would actually want to create the columns themselves turn off the auto generate columns equal to false then you'd have to actually write the XAML to, for which column is bound to which data but I just kinda wanted to give you an idea of how you would do this so now let's take the next problem which is how do we pass this particular list that we've we just want to generate this list one time we want to go to the database one time get this list then we want to be able to pass this a list around to our other windows so let's jump now to our window 2 where we need to end up. Well our window 2 we've got this data grid 
right? Data grid item source, and we have its items source property, and we're going to need to set it equal to some list. We'll, we'll just make up the name right now. This because we're just kind of stubbing out. This is actually what we want in this particular class. We want to show this list of employees. And so maybe what we do is in this window too, we create a method called public void, you know, display employees. And what we actually want to do is we want someone to pass into us a list of employees. And so now all I have to do is let's take this out of here and let's paste it into here. And so for our window two now, this XAML here, here's our data grid. And so when someone opens, before someone opens this window, they will call this method and they're going to pass into us the list that will be bound now to that data grid. So which window is that? Well, that's this window one. So when the user is going to navigate to this other window, so let's go ahead and create this other window now. I'll just create it in here. So I've got window two, WND2, we'll just do it each time. Now before we show it, what we're going to want to do is we need to call that method that we just created. So we come over here and it's called display employees. So dot display employees. And so now we need some way of passing in this list of employees. Now we don't have this list of employees yet. So now we think to ourselves, okay, this window has to have this data passed into it. So maybe what we do is we create a public property in this window. And then there's lots of ways. Maybe when we instantiated this window, we could have passed it in through a constructor and had a, you know, however we wanted to do it. So let's say public, whoops, and then we want to have this be a list of CLS employee. We're going to call it list of employees. And I'm just going to say get and set. So it's auto implemented property. So now someone when they create this window one, they're going to pass this data into us. When we click this button, we're just going to pass that along to this second window. So now let's go back to our original window here. And so now on this button click, what we have to do now, oops, sorry, the original window here in the main window, on our button click now, we have to have a way of getting that data to our next window. So we've got window one. WND1 close a new window. So each time you click this button, it's gonna oh create a new window one. Oops, I had forgotten to actually show the other window, so I apologize. Let's go back to window one. So this actually needs to then do a show dialogue on our second window. So I apologize. So window one that we're just on here. When we click this button, we need to pass the data, but we also need to open up our window two. So now back to our main window. When we click this button, we're going to click window one. Now, ultimately, we were going to want to, you know, show dialog this. But what do we need to do on window one before we do that? Well, we're going to need to pass in some sort of list of employees. So remember how we had this list of employees? We need to set this equal to something. So a better way to do this would be to create a local variable of list of employees. We'll call this list employees. Then we'll come back down here and we'll set this equal to our method here. And we can set our item source equal to that list. So now when this window gets initialized, we instantiate our employee manager. We call this get employees to get that list, the generic list of employees. We set it to our class level variable, which now we can assign it here. And now when someone clicks this button, we can also assign it down here. And so when they click the button, it assigns it to window one via the property, which then shows window one. So we come over to window one. The user can click this button, which will dis instantiate window two it passes along that when that employee list of employee objects which shows employee 2 and if we come here to employee 2 where our data grids at because it called that display employees it's going to then have bound that list of employees to our data 
So now when we run this, you can see here's our original collection that's been bound to our data grid. I click this button, which is opens up our window 1. Now when I click this button, it's going to call that method that passes in the same bound list to our other data grid, which you can now see is also bound to the exact same data. So again, this is a very typical scenario which you have to do all the time. So this should help you with your assignment 6 where you'll be binding combo boxes to some data in the database for passengers and flights where you'll do this exact same concept. You've got these database tables, you mimic them with a class, you create a generic list, and then you bind it to the combo box. Also on your final group project, you're going to have these items that have a name, description, and cost. Well again, it's just a table. You create a class that mimics that table. You pull the data out, create a generic list, and then you bind it to a data grid. So hopefully, you know, looking through this example, you can see just how you pull data out and can display it on the UI.